Hi friends! Navigating the 3D space is different than designing for 2D, and there are certain things to consider. On the surface, it seems easy enough to move through the scene view in Unity until you start adding objects. It does take a little getting used to. This video is for absolute beginners who are just opening Unity for the first time and starting to add objects to their scene. I think it's important to get off to a good start with some best practices so you're not trying to fix bad habits later on. That's why I made this video for you. Let's get started. So here I have an empty Unity scene and really this space goes on and on. It's infinite. And this grid appears like a ground and we can look underneath the grid like this. So how can we get grounded since this is an infinite space? Well, First thing I like to do, especially when I'm just prototyping, is to add a plane into the scene. How to do that is you go into the hierarchy on the left here and you right click and then select 3D object and then plane. And now you've got a ground in your scene. Now, before we continue, I do wanna talk about just mouse movement in general. So when I left click on my mouse, I can select an object in the scene. Even over here, I can select, you know, the directional light. Now on the right click of my mouse, I stay in the same position, but if you see the eyeball, it's moving around. However, I, as I'm holding the right mouse button, it's moving around the scene, how I'm viewing it but I stay in the same position. Now I use a three button mouse and when I click on the middle button, you'll see that there's a hand and then I hold that and I can really move quick. And then I let go, press the middle mouse button again, get the hand and I move really quick through the scene. So just wanted to show you that. And then the mouse that I'm using is a deluxe seeker mouse. I like this one because I love the flashing lights. Who doesn't? And it's nice and small for my hand. And it does tell you on the top what percentage of power you have left because this is wireless. The one thing is, is that I could be pretty rough on the mice that I use because I do a lot of 3D modeling and then just moving through this space can just put some wear and tear on your mouse. So this is the one case where I do suggest getting the protection plan. Uh, after about six months, I've had to use it. So um, there's also another mouse that people recommend. So if you don't want to go through the hassle of every six months replacing your mouse, I just happen to like the lights. You can, um, there's another mouse that I suggest in the description. So there'll be links to both of those items. Okay, so we've got a plane in our scene and I want to show you that there's a gizmo right here in the upper right hand corner and it shows all the three axes of the three dimensional space, your X, your Y and your Z. And this is the 3D perspective view. There's also isometric. Which lets you get really, you know, hone in straight on from an aerial view. Um, so that's really nice. Sometimes if you are moving around and you think, oh, this looks kind of strange, it's probably because you're in the isometric view. So what I suggest is just checking your gizmo and then go over here and then click to get that perspective back. So one thing, because this is infinite space here, we don't really know where the center of our world is until we do something that I consider a best practice is I click on the object and I look in the inspector on the right here. In the transform component, you'll see a lot of numbers for the position. Now you don't want all these decimal places because that's a lot for Unity to calculate. So it's nice to keep that really clean. And in case you wanna do math between objects it, with coding, it'll help to keep these numbers really clean. How to do that is you go to these three dots right here in the upper right, and then you click reset. And now everything is zeroed out and everything's at a scale of one. So I really like this because 
as you start bringing objects into a scene, like let's bring this piece of grass. You know, you just start throwing the grass in all over. And, you, you know, you start seeing that things are floating under the plane, above the plane, and that looked like it landed on the plane, so that's good. So really a best practice is to go here into the inspector on the transform and reset to zero. And if you want to do this quickly with all the grass pieces, go to the hierarchy, press your shift key, and then select all of the grass. Go back to the transform, press reset, and now they're all centered here, all on top of each other. Also, if you want to quickly, if you're really far away and you want to quickly go to see an object, just double click in the hierarchy, boom, <laughs> and you'll go right to the object, okay? Now here's where that isometric view comes in handy again. So let's click that and go to the Y. If you want to get really particular how this grass is placed from an aerial view, you could take like that one grass piece, then take the second grass piece, move it over here. Um, let's see, then, then this one, move it over here. And then this last grass piece, you can move like that. So like, like you're really picky about spacing things and sometimes you really need to be. This is a great way to do that. I would also remember to click off of that so you're back in your perspective view. So the other thing that I want to show you is how to snap objects quickly. Let's put a cube in this scene. We'll go to the hierarchy and we'll right click here. Go 3D object. And we'll select the first item, which is a cube. Now, if you look at our cube, wow, it got put underneath the plane there. So I'm going to click on this Y arrow and I'm going to bring this up here. And oh, first thing we should do is reset that. And see, it's still under that ground. So we're going to click on the Y and bring that up. And if you look at the inspector, it looks like it might be around 0.5. You could also type in here and go 0.5. You could also do math in the position here and do 0.5 and you could go like times two. So there's that as well. And then let's add in another cube. So I'm gonna right click. We're gonna go 3D object, add another cube. Let's also reset this one. And I just want to show you up here, right under the menu bar, there's um, this is how you would grab the object. You know, so you get these, these arrows. This is your rotate. And then this is your scale. You could scale everything from the middle. You can scale just one axis like that. One axis like this, one axis like this. All right. And then I'm going to set this back. So those are some real common items. How to snap. So let's press V on your keyboard. And when you do that, if you see this little box, it's a little gray box that starts going on different points of the object. I like to use a corner like this because that'll snap like really easy to that cube. So now it's perfectly snapped to that cube. And remember I rotated it, so it's a little bit on an angle. That's really all I have for this video. Just wanted to give you a little introduction about the 3D space in Unity. And in the next video, I'll talk about scale. You'll learn how to create worlds that aren't too oversized or undersized from real world dimensions, unless of course you want them to be. So if you like this video and you want to learn more about VR design, please click that subscribe button, give me a like, and I'll see you next time, friends.